let's take a look at that graph. You hit this fan too. It's not blowing on the mic. All right, so it looks like we got to our 750, just right on the money. Um, so those, those are just the, so obviously the red run is the last run that you just saw on the video. Um, I just left up one of the other working runs that I'd done, um, just playing with a little bit of the air fuel and the timing. Um, so it looked, up, looked like it picked up a little bit, but I think I'm pretty much there on the timing. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. Um, so again, this car, kind of go over it here because I didn't go over it at the beginning of the video. Um, this is a 2018 ZL1. And this car, obviously you just saw the Magnuson. Uh, this car has our stage one cam. It's got two inch headers. This car, is, I believe, has been on the channel before. Um, this was a bolt-on Magnuson car, and we did a camshaft upgrade to it. So just our stage one cam. Cylinder heads are not ported on this car. So, but you kind of see a pattern. This is, uh, this is getting to be a pretty common package, and we really like this package with or without the ported heads. Obviously, the ported heads are Ported heads are, worth, are, are turning out to be worth a decent amount of power on these LTs um, simply because of the way the heads flow and we're, we're catering our camshafts. Obviously we kind of have the ported heads in mind when we design the camshafts because they do, they do, are they are 650 lift. Um, stock LT heads, so the LT4 and the LT1 heads, if we put them on a flow bench, they kind of start to lay over after 600 lift on a flow bench. So with a camshaft at 650 lift, we're not really utilizing the 650 lift of the cam like we would with ported heads. And obviously the, it still adds power. I think this car was just under 700 wheel without the cam. I think it was like 690. So we actually, we, we picked up 60 wheel with, this is, this is our small cam. This is a mid 220s intake, low 240s exhaust super drivable with a stock 10 speed or 8 speed converter um, so if you got like a supercharger on an LT1 it also works really well um, so yeah 5 inch rotofab 103 K-Tech uh, 103 Magnuson inlet 2650 stage 1 cam uh, 92 millimeter upper and I believe we have an 825 lower on this um, I believe that's what that is. So basically just it's just slightly bigger on the lower than a stock 8-inch balancer. I think it's an 825. It's like a 5% lower. That's pretty common how we set those up. Um, until Unless we're doing like a, a big build, like a 427 with, uh, you know, we're chasing 20, 21, 20, you know, we're ma trying to max one of these out, 22 pounds of boost. Um, we'll stick with that that 825 lower or maybe an 86 lower and then we we got the flexibility that way to change the upper pulleys for you know if guys do do port injection down the road we can we can step them up on e85 or meth injection whatever um and we, we're not going so small on the top so when we start losing um we start losing belt grip so yeah 92 millimeter upper 825 lower stuff i just mentioned it's got this car has American, our American Racing Nikki Edition two inch headers with three inch to the stock muffler. So it's like the intermediate system. So it's three inch all the way back to the muffler. Uh, we, we basically cut the stock exhaust right off the muffler and we're able to clamp that American Racing system clamps right onto the stock muffler. Um, 160 thermostat, I think that's pretty much it. So we did go into the motor on this one, but yeah, it's, you know, it's hitting 12 pounds of boost with this pulley combination 93 this is 93 octane no e85 no methanol just straight 93 um, and this car is more of a road race car than a drag race car he is going to drag race it but he's already he's done an autocross with it uh since we've done some mods to it and he's done he did his first track day a couple weeks ago and he's way into it so this will car will see more track events and again when we're when we start talking track events kind of changes the Changes the formula a little bit. Just we keep some stuff in mind, such as cooling and boost levels. And I don't like pushing these cars on 93 octane, especially if they're road race cars past 12 pounds of boost. That's just that's it. The even how, with how good those Magnusons are at cooling, 
with the big intercoolers in them and stuff, you get them on a, on a 90 degree day at let's say Road America and you're cranking down those straightaways, uh, the IATs, the blower will run a steady 150. Um, there's instances with some of the customers we have where they're set up like this, but I do have flex fuel on them so they can run big, huge, giant pulleys, like 110 millimeter uppers with that lower, and it's like seven pounds of boost, and it will then run in the 120s on an 85 degree day, and but you can run 70% ethanol on it. So that's that's another way to go if, if the car is just gonna, be, just gonna be road raced. That's that's another way to go with these. And, and it'll still make not quite this power, but like 720 on seven pounds of boost and E with a 2650 with extremely cool IATs. You know, the manifold temperatures in the blower stay really cool to set up like that. But I'm starting to, to wander off conversation here anyway. Um, yeah, this car will be road raced, so we're not pushing this very hard. So I know we can make more power. We have made more power with this setup, especially with ported heads. You know, we've made over 800 wheel, but um, he opted out of the ported heads. So this is about where we end up on on cam, a cam setup with this blower and stock cylinder heads. So. We'll take a look at the data log. Let's see, I glanced at it quick. I usually try to jump out of the car as fast as I can to grab the camera so you guys aren't waiting. I'm usually here late at night doing these videos by myself. So, okay, so air fuel, that looks really good. You can see um, that's what I'm targeting. I'm targeting right at about 0.83. That's where I like to target these LT4s at this boost level on pump gas, 0 0.83, 0 0.82, 0 0.83. That's, that's looking really nice. Timing, not real aggressive. You can see uh, 16 in the mid range, you know, about around peak torque ish, about 16. And then I'm ramping it to 18 and a half. That would be a little higher. Um, again, though, these are working runs. So my, eh, my manifold temperature aren't too bad. That was 104 on that one. So starting at 102, it looks like and ending at 106 so it's not really pulling timing at that point i usually start pulling timing in yeah, 120 ish maybe 130 is where i start to pull timing on pump gas uh boost you can see just touching man not even not even yeah 12 and a half pounds 187 for kpa that's about 12 and a half pounds or our uh our atmosphere here in northern Illinois, we the map sensors with the Keon engine off usually said about 98 kPa, so that's just under 13 pounds, so that's right to the limit. But this car is going to be shifting at, I got this thing set up to shift about 6,700, so yeah, it's going to be in the 12s, but you can see how these Magnusons, and again, something I've talked about before, you can see how these Magnusons kind of ramp boost up. So there at the bottom of the hit there, that's like 7 pounds, 2,500 RPM, that's 7-ish pounds, 150. And so we're going from, you know, down low. Now a 10 speed car like this, unless you're paddling it on the street, you're never really, you stand on this car anywhere at any speed and in, a, in regular drive, and it's gonna downshift and whack the throttle right up to, you know, whack the RPM right up to like 5,500. So you're never really gonna be down here unless you're like in maybe a road racing situation where you're paddle shifting it. But yeah, you can see how those, the Magnusons, and I like that about the Magnusons, the 2650s, specifically how they ramp the boost in so it's a little softer on the motors when we're leaning on stuff a little harder you know when we're taking maybe a stock lt4 to 950 ish wheel we're trying to make something live for a little while on a stock bottom end it kind of acts more like a centrifugal blower which is kind of cool uh I, that's that's one of the one of the the deals about the 2650 i really like and that's just the nature of the rotor pack and the way the case is made um they're designed more like kind of like a they act more like a screw blower like a whipple in, in that sense where they kind of ramp the boost up so it is it's easier it's easier on the motors so we can lean on stuff a little harder because the boost you know obviously we're again down at 2500 you can see where i started the pole like 2300 that's seven pounds of boost and it ramps to almost 13 so we're getting a pretty you know we're getting a six pound ramp i mean that's a centrifugal will ramp a little more than that maybe from like four or five pounds to like 12 is about you know, like a D1SC take, you know, D1X or something like that will ramp, especially the D1Xs will really ramp. But so the Magnuson's kind of like an in-between. It's, it's pretty nice. It still gives you good mid-range torque, but not 
way, way too much torque, like a stock LT4. I think they're just, they're so torquey. There's just almost too much torque, and it just, for a streetcar like this, where he's just on like a NATO drag radial, it just blows the tires off, and it's just not usable. So this makes the car so much more usable. But anyway, like I said, you know, when you stand on it, it's going to, it's going to dump down a bunch of gears and bump the RPM up, and from there, but even there, you know, you're 11 pounds, something like that, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, ramping up to 12, so it makes for a, a pretty fun car to drive. So yeah, that's about it. I mean, air fuel looks really good, timings. So this knock line here, I have that set up um, to actually pull timing, which is in these LT and these E92 ECUs. Um, you can see I have that I have that table pulling some timing from a couple of the cylinders uh, from the factory. So I, I got the stock tune loaded up in the background. You can see that's a stock, that's the stock uh, cal. So you can see how it actually pulls on cylinder number two. It's labeled cylinder one because it starts at zero. It's actually cylinder two. It's pulling five degrees of timing in the mid-range on cylinder two. And that's that's a stock. That's how they do it from the factory. And what I find on some, some of these LT4s is zeroing out that table, you end up with a bunch of knock. And I'll go back here. I'm kind of nerding out about some data logging here, but just to go over some stuff is some of you guys leaving comments like to see this technical stuff but i data log every single cylinder as far as what each cylinder the ecu is seeing for knock and what it's estimating that where the knock which cylinder the knock is coming from so obviously there's only two knock sensors so it can't know exactly but by the 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 engineers when they calibrate these things and they use like matlab to calibrate them they can get an idea of by the frequency of the knock and how loud it is which cylinder it's coming from and also by the firing order so obviously if the knock is occurring um you know it's it's also it also knows obviously the injectors are firing in the firing order this the coil so it, it knows exactly where the crank position is and that's how fast these ecus are they can read that quickly and so when knock is detected it can see pretty close where you know where in the firing order the knock just was picked up and it can tell which cylinder it's coming on. Basically just like how the misfire monitor works. By the crank position and cam position, it can figure out which cylinder is misfiring. The knock system works very similar to that. So um, even though you have only have two sensors, one per bank, it can basically say, okay, that it's this knock sensor on this bank, and then it was this firing order, and it and then that combined with um, tuning it with different frequencies, you know, where it is on the block and stuff like that, all that stuff combined. They get pretty accurate. So in the end, basically, I can pull all, which this car I tried. I tried zeroing out that static retard table, and I was getting a bunch of knock on cylinder two. So pulling a couple degrees of timing out of there curbs that knock, and that allows me to put a little, another degree of timing through the whole timing curve on the other cylinders by just pulling a couple degrees out of that other that one cylinder. And power basically you're going to you're going to end up with more power if you can run a little more timing on the other cylinders i know it gets kind of complicated but um if the factory does it they spend lots and lots of time and lots and lots of money on calibrating these engines um so i'll kind of follow that i don't just completely disregard what the what the factory uh, engineers are doing because they spend a lot of time um and they have they basically have software that writes the that comes up with the figures and tables um, that we're seeing through HP tuners when we read this stuff out and we're looking at it in a table form. Um, they're using a, a program, I believe it's called Solid, or not SolidWorks, uh, MATLAB and Simulink. Those are two types of softwares that they can hook a bunch of data to and a bunch of sensors to and it spits a bunch of data out and they can write a calibration with that data. So um, it works really well and it's real high tech stuff and um, so I'm, I, I follow along with it sometimes. I, I'll go along with what the, especially on these ECUs, I'll kind of go along with what the factory does because instead of just maxing everything out and zeroing stuff out and maxing stuff out, I don't really tune that way. Um, anyway, this is looking good. We don't need to talk about that anymore. <laughs> we spent enough time there. Let's take a look at the dynographs one more time. Just to kind of see. That was nice. I did pick up a little bit of torque in there. Um, yeah, that looks good. So that'll wrap it up for this car. 
This guy will have, we still got a couple months left in the season. We got a lot of racing to do. So this guy's going to hit some uh, track days. He might get to the drag strip once. Um, we'll see him up at our touring event up in Wisconsin Dells. He'll be up there with the car and uh, he's, uh, he's out enjoying it. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, keep checking back on the channel. If you guys like what you see on this channel, leave comments, subscribe, whatever. Um, I like seeing comments. I like feedback. Um, I try to answer as many questions as I can. Sometimes I don't get to the comments, but uh, I like it when guys leave comments and give me feedback on uh, what I'm doing and what they like, what they don't like, whatever. I don't care. You, don't, you won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later.